Hi, this is a minute of overpass. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now this week I want to talk about some of the tools that we use when working with remote teams. Okay, so last week I talked about working with remote teams and you know the three ways that we've done it in the past. So we you know either doing like on a like a project basis with you know somebody on like Upwork or Odesk as it used to be called or the time you know having a like a dedicated team like within another tech company like you know uh, or, or working with like uh, as an outsourcing uh, arrangement so where we're working with another team that's already been set up someplace or the way that we that I prefer to do it uh, or we do for like the ongoing stuff which is have like full-time freelancers as part of the team so like I said last week I, I much prefer you know having people who who prefer to work from home who have a computer who have a decent internet connection who want to spend more time with their families or not have to be bogged down with all the commute and the and the office stuff and the office politics and just prefer you know and, and but you know still want to be able to to you know, make a living and and you know and get on with things so so you know you know slowly we're building up this team at one point we had like a huge team and it got too much to manage uh, and you know a lot of this is learning as we go but now we've got four full-time people we're looking at taking on a fifth here very soon uh, but um, you know and we have to see whether or not we can handle that so and a lot of the things you know, a lot of the difficulties we have here is with communication so people working in different time zones uh, you know making sure that everyone's you know everyone knows what they're supposed to be doing make sure everyone's on the right track and all that kind of stuff so what I thought I would do this week is talk about some of the tools that we use and then some of the like the, some of the things we use in the past and how things have sort of uh, you know one why we cho uh, choose one tool over another so the first one we use here is slack so if you have a look at my screen you know here you know slack is something uh, if you're a developer you're probably familiar with it and it just it's just like a like a chat engine so it's a bit like Skype um, but but it doesn't do video but you know so like here you can see a conversation I have with Nika uh, let's say over to design you can set up channels so you know we uh, we do our uh, we do an infographic every Tuesday, so you know here's a conversation that goes through uh, about about the design and you know what the topic's going to be for the next few weeks and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the, the big benefit we used to use uh, Skype in the beginning, so the big benefit this has over Skype is that it's 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 more centralized. So Skype is more peer to peer, as as I understand it. So like. A, a common scenario I have in the past or you know I still use Skype when working with somebody who's not part of our team because uh, I don't want to set them all up in slack and everything like that uh, you know if they're just doing like a one-off job or something uh, but they, they, like somebody might send me some, like a file like an icon and I'll be like on my phone you know at lunch and I'll, I'll download it have a look at it okay that looks good or whatever and then when I go back to my computer I'll try to download it again but they've gone offline and it's no longer available so this is something that you know, this is one of the big benefits I find with Slack, and also it's searchable. So I think Slack is free for uh, you know for limited like if you search searching back, I think a, a certain number of weeks. Uh, I do pay every week, so it's you know it's worth it to me to be able to search as far back as I need to, and also to have the, all these conversations just there. So you know if. You know, if I send somebody a password or if I send somebody a, a screenshot or something I could go back and look at it you know because it's, it's a lot easier than after you go find it in that conversation so slack is, is, is probably our biggest like the thing I couldn't do without so and the other, the next tool we use is G Suite or Google Apps for Domains. So you know it, it would be very easy to all of us you know set up free Gmail accounts you know but I just kind of prefer having you know everybody having a, an account so everything they do for overpasses you know is is locked down to you know to to our account everybody has an overpass e you know email address so you know you know name at overpass.co.uk so if, you know when we do work with clients the, it, you know I think it looks a lot more professional than just like a gmail thing going out there you know and it also helps in terms of setting up permissions for all you know different systems and stuff like that uh, so like you know Google uh, Google apps for domains of course sorry Google G Suite as it's now called uh, of course you got like uh, Google Docs and uh, Google Sheets so like here's an example of Google Sheets so we got uh, a content schedule for the next few weeks on the blog we're trying to get ahead before Christmas so that we can still have content going out at Christmas even though we're gonna take that time off um, 
So you can see here, you know, uh, they're going through updating this. I can update it too. Uh, and then, uh, you got, of course, you got Google Docs. And like, so here's an example of an article that was written by uh, by Nika on our team. Uh, you know, I'm able to go through and just you know check through it, make any edits that I need to. Uh, and if there's something I'm not sure of, just highlight it, place a comment. She gets notified, and she can make make a change. So, I mean, it's all very fast and flexible. I know we could use um, Office 365 and I know that's getting better and better but the last time I used it I just found it a bit clumsy uh, but this was I mean, this is like three four years ago uh, but you know now it's you know I just, and I've just been I've been using you know Google Docs uh, or you know the Google suite for for years right so and in fact I wouldn't even have office if I you know office 365 if it weren't for the fact that clients send word documents and Excel documents all the time. And of course, you got Google Drive. You know, it's you know, we can use Dropbox, and we do use Dropbox when we're working with clients. So clients always have Dropbox, and they prefer to use Dropbox. But because you know we're all on the Google, you know, Google domains or Google oh, G Suite, since we're all on G Suite, uh, it's easier to do permissioning here. So I can just like set up a shared folder. We can have everything in the same place, sharing the documents and all that kind of stuff, and everything gets centralized. So. Uh, when it comes to like code, we use uh, source control like Git, which you know makes sense. But and I know some people will put like documents and images into source code control, but I, I prefer to use uh, just you know Google Drive for that. That way, it's you know you map a drive; it always gets uploaded and stuff like that. But uh, so anyway, that you know that's a lot of help. Now for task management, we use you know we used we started off using Basecamp, then we moved to Active Collab. Uh, we use Jira. Well, we tried to use Jira for a while, but the learning curve was just so. It was so big. I mean, it's good if you're a developer and you use it all the time, and you you know you can spend a few days learning it. But when we you know we bring new people on, I don't really want to spend time learning Jira, and a lot of things just don't make sense for like day-to-day -day activity. So so we just use Trello, and it's just Trello is like the easiest thing. So like I'll give you an example here. Um, Here's the board we have for content. So again, back to content. So you know, here we could go through and I can add uh, blog topics that I think you know would make a good blog topic. Put blog ideas down, special reports, video ideas, that kind of stuff. Uh, and somebody could pick it up, you know, move it over to their column and start working on it. Um, so we got you know different types of content that we need going out. We got you know so when this is Maribel and Veronica, our two writers, if they take it and start working on it, so that goes goes into ongoing research. Then they move it into uh, for proofreading, so I could go through and just have a quick read of it, uh, and then uh, it goes into publish. So it's just a very you know nothing gets lost in in the mix there because we have everything on those boards. And again, it's just like a list system, but and you've probably used Trello before, but uh, but you know it's just it's trying to keep. Like not only do I want to keep the cost low, I want to keep the the learning curve low. You know, I, I want to get you know people moving as fast as possible, and you know it's and not be such a stickler for things being done a certain way. I mean, they should be done a certain way, but they that that certain way shouldn't take days to learn. It should take minutes or hours. And of course, I mentioned this before. We use uh, we use Git. We used to use Subversion. Uh, we've also used. Um, uh, yeah, we used uh, our own hosted uh, subversion, which I was terrified of actually having the server go down and not having the backups work. Uh, so w then we moved to uh, cloud hosted. So we used a cloud. CloudForge was the company we used. And then when we moved to Git, uh, we were still with CloudForge, but they, they kept getting more expensive. So we moved over to Bitbucket, and Bitbucket has like a very generous free tier. Uh, and uh, you know, but and if we need to add more developers, we could just you know start paying a bit more for that. Um, and uh, you know, I just I just prefer it. You know, being able to go in and you know, uh, my whole thing with I, I try to have check-ins as frequently and, and as possible. Especially if it's a new developer that I don't know that well, I'd like to have check-ins like on a daily basis just to see how things are going. Uh, and then you just go in here and, and see a, see a summary of how all that stuff works. Uh, and then hub staff. So this is something that we just started using about three or four months ago. Uh, you probably heard of tools like this. So Hubstaff, there's there's other ones like Time Doctor um, and and stuff like that, where it just basically it runs on a computer. So when you say I'm starting work, you would go through, you would select the project that you're working on, and it would start at like a clock. So if I actually let me just show you here, if I go up here, I can start Hubstaff, and I can say I want to work on admin. It will start this clock going, and it would just start doing an, an admin task. So it will start 
doing that. And what it will do is every 10 minutes, uh, at, ran at random intervals, it will take a screenshot of my screen, uh, and then uh, you know, so that it goes into this tool, so that you know, you can see what it is. Now, the reason I haven't used this before uh, is just because it sounds really creepy to me. Now, if you, but one of the things I hated about working in an office was. The, the the boss walking around behind you right so like you know somebody walking around saying what are you doing over there uh, all that kind of stuff so because you could be like reading an article that's related to technology or, or whatever it is you're working on but if it doesn't look like that you could get into like into trouble for whatever reason uh, so so that was yeah, I was kind of like really it just seemed really creepy uh, and we started it for a while with another tool and then we stopped it the thing I like about Hubstaff, I don't know if you see this, is that all these images are grayed out. So that I can't really, I can see, you know, generally that something was worked on, but I can't see like specifics. I can't see, you know, someone's emails or pictures of the kids or anything like that. And, and basically it's the times that I'm more interested in. And to be honest with you, I hardly ever look at this. I get a summary every day from Hubstaff saying how many hours were gone to each one and, uh, and that helps. Now, you know, people have asked, why don't you just pay for the work that you're done and, and not based on time? And that's it's a really good question. It's one that, I mean, our entire economy goes, you know, if, you're, if you have a full-time person, it's always based on time. It's, you know, uh, and it, it just lowers the risk. I mean, some people prefer to have a full-time job rather than do uh, uh, you know, contract-based work or project-based work, which might not be going on, you know, forever. So, like, if I don't have any projects to work on, I still have to pay my workers. So, yeah, I still have to pay the other freelancers because that's our agreement. So, you know, it's it's it it, re it lowers the risk for them uh, and it increases it, the risk becomes part becomes mine. Uh, but at the same time, so that so that's you know. Because to be honest with you, I don't mind that much. As long as they're producing what I think they should be producing at the, at the right rate, everything goes fine. So so, so that's it for this week. It's, it's really quick going through some of these tools. It probably You've probably heard of them already, uh, but you know, we've gone through so many of these different things before. And again, if you talk to me a year from now, we'll probably have different tools that we're using and different methodologies, but it's always a constant, you know, trying to see what works best and uh, and keep things moving, you know, moving smoothly. So, uh, so that's it for this week. I hope it's been helpful. Now, if you have liked the video, uh, please go ahead and click the like button. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, now's your chance. Um, and uh, follow us on Snapchat. Uh, leave a comment, and that's it. I'll talk to you next week.